Hi, my name is Lynn Peoples. I am a science writer, a former biostatistician, and the author of The Inner Clock, which is coming September 24th. I wanted to write this book because I was curious if my inner clocks might explain my lifelong struggles. Basically, my inner clocks have been ticked off my whole life. I grew up in Seattle. The gloom is real. I remember driving to school in the dark in high school, and I remember stepping outside after basketball practice and the sky would be dark again. I struggled to keep my eyes open in class. I felt lousy much of the time. Then I went to Minnesota for college. The winter days there are bitterly cold, but they're bright. I suddenly felt happier, more energetic, but I, I didn't really understand why. Years later, I moved back to Seattle and one day I had the opportunity to tour the Seattle Mariners locker room. They had just installed these strange new lights that you could adjust the color and intensity of. And the technology aimed to strengthen the players' circadian rhythms, as well as energize them before games and relax them after. And that's when it clicked for me. Could my broken clocks be fixed? My research for this book took me 50 feet underground in Arkansas, where I spent 10 days timeless. It also took me to the northern reaches of Alaska during the summer solstice, where it never quite got dark. It also sent me overnighting in a sunflower maze, plucking hairs from my head that I, I sent to scientists in Germany, and spitting into test tubes repeatedly into the wee hours of the morning. Through it all, I learned that my inner clocks drift and fall out of sync with the earth and the sun. I learned that this indeed made me feel miserable. I also learned that evolution gifted all, nearly all life, from plants, penguins, to people, with biological mechanisms to tell time, and for good reason. I recommend three core clock rules. The first is about contrast. Brighten your days and darken your nights. Get outside in the morning. Sit close to a window during the day. Supplement that light if you need with artificial light, but make sure it's bright and it's rich in blue wavelengths. And then at night, dim those lights. I love the cozy vibe created by the faux candles I have now spread around my apartment. I can light them all with a click of a remote. And as you've been warned probably many times now, limit your screen time. Second, constrict, tighten the meal times during the day. We really should only be eating when our body is ready to handle the incoming calories. So hold off on your first meal until an hour or two after you get up, and then at least three hours before bed, stop taking in calories. That means not a single potato chip or a sip of wine. And the third thing is consistent. Be consistent about when you eat, when you exercise, and when you go to bed. Jet lag can be brutal. It takes about a day per time zone cross to recover. But there are ways to speed up that process. First, prepare before you take to the air. Second, acclimate upon arrival. And third, do the math for longer flights and have sunglasses on hand. Modern life is profoundly messing with our inner clocks. Fortunately, there are simple fixes to reset our clocks and reclaim some of those lost rhythms. It's really about reinfusing those natural cues back into our lives.